<clears throat> Welcome back, everybody. We're going to start off by reviewing some material from uh, the lecture before the break. Can anyone remind me what we were talking about? Anyone? Vitamin C! Good job, everyone. Can anyone tell me the main functions of vitamin C? Vitamin C is an antioxidant. Wait, wait, what's an antioxidant? Well, if you'd let me finish, I tell you that an antioxidant helps protect cells from damage by free radicals. Don't you remember? Guys, guys, I know everyone gets worked about vitamin C, but let's relax. Um, can anyone tell me anything else about vitamin C? Vitamin C is also essential in making collagen. Very good, very good. And there's one more last important thing you guys are missing. I personally say the most important thing about vitamin C. Mm. Selena? It helps the immune system work properly to protect the body from diseases by enabling the production of white blood cells. Good job. Now, just for the sake of time, I'll go over the top sources of vitamin C that we discussed last class. So, coming in at first place, we got acerola juice at 3,872 milligrams. And then we got just acerola coming in 1,644. We got rose hips coming in at 541. And then we have unsweetened slash um, undiluted orange juice at 379.4 milligrams, guavas 376.7, and then the sweet yellow peppers at 341.3. That will definitely be on the next test, so make sure you guys remember that. Wait, you're telling me these mandarin oranges don't have vitamin C? Isn't that like their thing? Silly Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> they do meet your DRI values for vitamin C. However, they are also artificially sweetened, and they wouldn't be the best choice for incorporating your vitamin C into your diet. Okay. What's the DRI value for vitamin C? Good question. Can anyone else answer that? Brooke? The RDA for adults is 90 milligrams for men and 75 milligrams for women. Correct. It's pretty important. I will be on the next test, so good job remembering that. Wait, I've never heard of the Deucerola before. How else can I meet the DRI daily recommendation for vitamin C? Um, what about my orange? My doctor told me that oranges have a lot of vitamin C. That's good stuff, Jaden. That's correct. You can also meet your DRI values by eating a cup of broccoli, red peppers, or strawberries. It's important to note that some people have different needs than others. But how do you know if you have additional needs? Well, a couple of examples would include a pregnant woman. Um, those ladies need an extra 120 milligrams per day. And if you smoke, you're going to need an extra 35 milligrams than a normal person. Wait, I have a question. Sure. Is it possible to have too much vitamin C? That's a good question. Can anyone help me answer that? Celia? I think so. Shouldn't you not exceed 2,000 milligrams per day? I know it's unlikely to reach levels of toxicity through the diet, but I remember learning that bad things can happen when you take too many supplements. Wait, 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 wait. You're telling me bad things are going to happen to me if I take these supplements? Calm down, everyone. First of all, it's weird that you carry vitamin C with you at all times, but it's not going to kill you. Even at high in intakes, vitamin C has a low toxicity. It is not believed to cause serious adverse effects or even at high intakes. Um, however, there can be some minor effects of overtaking supplements. Can anyone think of a couple? What's up? I've heard that too many vitamin C supplements can give you diarrhea, nausea slash vomiting, and abdominal cramps. Talk about gross. Spot on. Jay, let's, let's relax a little over there. Um, <laughs> there can also be other GI disturbances due to the osmotic effect of unabsorbed vitamin C in the GI tract. Now we know what happens when you take too much vitamin C, but can we review what happens when you take too little? Well, we know that smokers and people that are exposed to secondhand smoke can be more deficient in vitamin C. Also, I remember learning that people with GI conditions or some types of cancers can also be deficient. Don't forget that you can be deficient if you don't have enough fruits and veggies. Great job, ladies. Um, to get further into the specifics, we can talk about how 
a lack of vitamin C can lead to a decrease of the transcription of pro-collagen, DNA hypermethylation, and decrease in iron absorption. If prolonged, these symptoms can result in scurvy, which involves anemia and hemorrhages. So it's important to make your meet your daily requirements. Well, what if I hate fruit? Are there any other forms of vitamin C? This food label says this juice contains ascorbic acid, which I think is a form of vitamin C. You would be correct, Brooke. Vitamin C supplements come in the form of sodium ascorbate, calcium ascorbate, and ascorbic acid. A combination of products such as S or C as well. So make sure when you're doing your food shopping, you look at the food labels and nutrition panels for those types of molecules. While we're on the topic of supplements, can I ask a personal question? Sure. Um, my dad is currently undergoing niacin symbacetin therapy to treat his high cholesterol and high triglyceride levels in his blood. I overheard his doctor saying that he should cut back on vitamin C supplements. Why is that? Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. My grandma had that. And she actually died from it, so we might want to get that checked out. But normally, niacin symbacetin therapy increases HDL levels. However, vitamin C in combination with other antioxidants may reduce this and increase, which counteracts the benefits of the treatment. It's actually really interesting. I heard there was controversy surrounding the impacts of vitamin C and other antioxidants with cancer treatments. Yeah, I actually just read a paper stating that antioxidants protect tumor cells from radiation. However, I read another paper that showed studies of vitamin C protecting normal cells from radiation-induced destruction. Wow. That's some good stuff there, Alyssa. That's pretty insightful. That's why it's always important to consult your doctor. Does anyone else have any other questions before we get on with the meeting? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Is it true that vitamin C can cure colds? I've had the sniffles for a couple weeks now, and oranges haven't been doing much for me. Oh my god, I had the same problem last month. After looking into it, I found that recent studies have shown that vitamin C doesn't reduce the risk of getting a cold, but it might shorten your colds or give you milder symptoms. That is also correct. Just to close up this lecture, the last piece of information I'll give you guys is kind of a fun fact, um, and it's about scurvy. Ooh. Ooh, I know. Very gross. So, scurvy was a common disease that sailors were infected with. Um, back in around the 1700s due to prolonged vitamin C deficiency. It's been said that over two million sailors have been affected by this. They only found that lemons and oranges can be the effective treatment for scurvy. Wow. 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 Take your vitamins, it will be vitamin C in this in your future.